Hello everyone. Objective of this video is to understand and clarify all the doubts which normally students have while calculating the force on dielectric in parallel plate capacitor. Right. So we know that when there is a dielectric which is which is partially inside the see this diagram partially inside the capacitor plate uh, parallel plate capacitor, then capacitor applies a force in this direction. Right. So see this arrow. Fine. So first we'll understand what's the reason of that force. Why how there is a force coming here. And then we will clear one more common confusion, which mostly students have. So first coming to the reason why there's a force in this direction. Now here, the common confusion is that first, let me remove all this. So the common confusion here is that since direct, the question here is, this is the question that inside the capacitor field is uniform in this direction. And then you have bound charges like this. These are the positive and negative bound charges. Since field is in this direction, so a negative charge force should be away and positive charge it should be like this. So that should be a compressive or compressive force and or the elongation force on the dielectric plate. How there's a force in this direction, right? So that's the question. The answer is fringing field or as effect. So what happens when you go near to the edge of the capacitor, the field is no longer uniform because here, field is uniform because this side and this side you see equal amount of charge and it remains fairly uniform in almost 70 to 80 percent of the region of capacitor but when you are approaching the ends that time field is no longer uniform field lines becomes curved right so this is the field line this arrow is for electric field and now since this is the direction of electric field the force on this will be like this right so this negative charge this force i am drawing on dielectric plate not on the capacitor so this is for this force is in this direction. Follow, see where I'm pointing. This force is in this direction. So there is a net in that direction, right? So vertical component cancel. So there's a net force applied in this direction. Fine. So that is how force is applied. Okay. Fine. So I think this is clear. Now coming to the calculation. How the calculation is done? To calculate this, we calculate the capacitance. Now this is a combination of two parallel plate capacitor. And then here up to here, directly constant is K, K, so K epsilon naught A by D, here epsilon naught A by D, right? I hope you understand this area and all, because here it is X into W for this capacitor, for this capacitor it is L minus X into W, right? So I'm assuming that this calculation you know before, and then objective is not here to explain this calculation, but to clear certain confusion which normally uh, students have. So C is this, then after that, what, what is the normal method? You write C and let us say if battery remains connected, uh, then the voltage drop remains constant. And then you do du by dx and you find the force, fine. But here the common confusion is that now the question you ask again, that what's the, what was the reason again? The reason was the fringe field. But while calculating this half CV square, calculating the C, we have neglected the effect of the fringe field, right? So what has happened? We have neglected the cause of force. So first we are saying that cause is fringe, then we are neglecting in this calculation. So what really is happening, right? So let us understand what is happening really. So the first thing is we cannot neglect the cause, right? As simple as that, we can't neglect this. So if we can't neglect the cause, then, then what should happen? See, this is suppose half CV square with some error because the effect of fringe field will also come. We don't need to calculate the effect of fringe field. Let us say the effect of fringe field is E. E is error. It might be positive also, negative also. This, this is something. So U is half CV square plus E, right? E is something, the energy, which is here, right? Which is not actually this, okay? So now the most important point here is, which you should understand is when this dielectric goes in, Suppose this electric comes here. Let us say its new position is this now, this one. And this is, this part is shifted. Where is energy changing? The energy is changing in this region, right? This error was where? The error was here, right? So that error part has not changed. So when you differentiate U with respect to X, the error, the differentiation of this error, which was due to the fringe field, the differentiation becomes zero, right? We have not neglected, we can't neglect. But the point is that this error, whatever is the error, when dielectric is moving in, remains constant. So its differentiation becomes 
zero. This change is happening only in this region where the electric field is very, very nice and uniform. Right? So that is the reason we are not neglecting here. We can consider, but that the differentiation becomes zero. I hope all of you have understood. If you have not understood, you can just watch this video again. So that's it. That was the objective to clear this doubt which over the years I have seen many, many students have. And mostly in most of the coaching centers, this is not explained properly, right? So that's it. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching. If you have liked this, if you have studied something, if you have learned something, then please, you have to, please, you have to uh, like this video and share with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe also. Thank you very much. And then I'll see you in next video.